Welcome back to LMS portal here Dr. Kavita for BA optional English fourth semester section 43 session 12. The topic of this session is the poem Gandhi and poetry written by K. Sachidanandan. In this picture you could see that the poetry is sneaking towards Gandhi just to give you a gist of what the poem is all about and to arouse a bit of curiosity. Getting to know about the author, K. Sachidanandan is a recipient of many prestigious awards. He was recognized as a renowned poet and a critic. He is a gigantic literary personality appreciated by the world. He was born in Trishur, a region of Kerala. He is perhaps the most translated contemporary Indian author who has 31 collections of translation works in 19 different languages. He has 24 collections of poetry published in different anthologies besides many of his other writings. He has represented India in many literary festivals and book fairs across the world and at times visiting abroad universities as visiting professor. He is globally recognized and appreciated for his incredible writings. Coming to know about the works and awards of K. Sachidanandan, it has a huge list where I couldn't place in a single slide. Partially whatever I have placed may seem the least yet to proceed. He was a professor of English to feel proud and he later worked as a chief executive of the Sahitya Academy, the Indian National Academy of Literature. He worked as a director of the School of Translation Studies at Indira Gandhi Open University, Delhi. He received seven times the Kerala Sahitya Academy Awards. He received more than 40 literary awards from different states in India and from different countries across the globe. A person, a personality who is appreciated enough. Let us have a personality outlook. Sachidanandan poetic career was universally recognized. His writings are having the style of great simplicity and he adopts the mode of non-rhetorical which means most of his writings have a very simple language and his poetries probably are with conversation modes and that is where he got connected with so many as many readers around and across the globe. Sachidanandan's work has also been translated into many foreign languages. In a review of German translation, Ish Golab Nishchat best said about Sachidanandan that he is a poet on a journey. Poetry for him is a cry against all worlds which makes him interesting beyond India. Sachidanandan life sojourned with his writings. His poetry broke many worlds and bridged many countries. A great personality. Now coming to the poem The Gandhi and Poetry A Revelation. Gandhi and Poetry is one of Sachidanandan's amazing poems which appeared in the collection of the anthologies entitled Why I Write. 
this poem has a very special category or a very special nature where the poet creates a prosopopoeia a figure of speech in which an abstract thing is personified in this context i would like to say is that personifying an abstract is not an easy task one should have immense thought process and k sachidanandan has gifted us such a wonderful poem let us enjoy he personifies the poem how to personify a poem or let me put it in another way how does a poem get personified it makes sense how does a poem get personified in the world of writings poetry has the highest status in fact poetry is the crown of writings poetry always feels so proud and high and privileged because it is written by great authors and appreciated by the classic people the royal people being in such a status now the poem wanted to meet our gandhi ji perhaps the poem feels that gandhi ji is more popular than the poem and that is why the poem wanted to meet gandhi and know the secret of his popularity so the poem is purely in a very imaginary conversational mode where gandhi and the poem makes a good conversation the poet uses a very generic sense just like starting or reciting a story the way once upon a time and this poem also starts with the same style let me read the first two lines of the text one day a lean poem visits gandhi's ashram only to have a glimpse of him so here we need to observe the word lean so now we understand with this word lean that the poem is looking very lean it is not fat and stuffy i cannot say that it doesn't have stuff but the stuff whatever it had was set to a, to a period but not to the present situation so in the present situation the poetry is looking very lean and tired and this poem he that is how the poet personifies he wanted to meet gandhi so one day he made a plan and he visited gandhi's ashram and there he stood near the door because he didn't have the guts to go and sit with gandhi directly maybe it felt or he felt a kind of inferiority because once upon a time 
the poem was sitting with great kings, queens, poets and received n number of applauses, appreciation. But now it had a bit of inferiority because it lost all its popularity and now he sees the simple Gandhi who is sitting and spinning his threads and chanting a bhajan ram. To take a keen note of what the poem thinks at that moment is very important. Standing near the door and the poem feeling very sad that Gandhi did not pay any attention to the poem. The poem thinks that it could have been Gandhi's bhajan instead of being a poetry. The poem thought that if it would have been a bhajan, it could have served the purpose of Gandhi. Soothing his soul, mind and emotion. In fact, Gandhi loves bhajan because it controls his emotions, it soothes his mind and heart. The poem was so desperate to grab Gandhi's attention. So let us see what the poem did to grab Gandhi's attention. Let me read the text now. The poem now cleared his throat and Gandhi glanced at him sideways through those glasses that had seen the hell. Which is very much true that Gandhi had seen the sordid realities of the hell. His life had been a hell throughout. He had seen the common people sufferings, their sorrows, their survival, which had been a hell. So in many ways Gandhi had experienced the hell in the living world and so Gandhi looking at the poem understood that the poem is in the hell. The poem looked so weird in a very wretched condition. So now looking at the poem Gandhi wanted to ask something. I will say that the grand questions. He posed a few questions like, let me read now the text. Have you ever spun thread? He asked. Ever pulled a scavenger's cart? Ever stood in the smoke of an early morning kitchen? Have you ever starved? The poem was unaware of anything what Gandhi asked. The poem never knew about spinning a thread or a scavenger's pulling the cart or a woman who stands in the kitchen with a smoke and fire or common people starving to death. So let us see 
what the poem replies to the questions Gandhi asked. The poem pleads his helplessness as he was born in the woods in a hunter's mouth and later he was brought up by a fisherman but he was alienated from the ordinary reality. Here there is a keen insight where it takes us to the woods. The poem was born in the woods in a hunter's mouth which connects to Valmiki who was a hunter and through his mouth the birth of poetry was and later he was brought up by a fisherman which also symbolically connects to the Vyasa Muni who was a fisherman who flourished the poem and we well know that Valmiki and Vyasa Muni are the great authors of our epics. But these great poems were set to only a set of period. But now perhaps a few, not many, may know the language Sanskrit. Imagine if this epics were in Sanskrit would we have read it? Being an Indians, we would have not even read it. Due to the translation, we came to know what is Ramayana or what is Mahabharata. So I hope now the poem is getting us what really we know about the language Sanskrit where the birth of the poem, how it flourished and what kind of popularity it had in during what times and what is the situation of the present time. During that time of course it was for the royal people, it was for the class people, but not for the ordinary people. But now the times have changed and this poetry lost its purpose. So, so far we discussed the first stanza of the poem and to enhance the understanding of the first stanza, let me just give you an overview of the poem. The poem visits Gandhi's ashram. The poem feels very sorry because it couldn't get the attention of Gandhiji. Finally, it clears its throat and grabs Gandhi's attention. Gandhi looking at the poem, Gandhi understood that the poem is in the hell. Gandhi asked a few questions to the rich poem but the answer was very very critical where it literally gave the truth of its royal claim but it failed to serve 
the purpose of common people is what we understood in the first stanza. Now getting to the presumption of the poem, will the poetry again holds the royal status and how is what the poem leads us to the further conversation between Gandhi and the poetry which we shall see in the next session. Thank you.